This is a guide to what I believe to be the staple cards in Historic Brawl. Meaning, when you start building, these cards are the first to consider. Most decks will have a use for these, for they are just all around good. Removal, card advantage, ramp, win conditions, and more. Remember to remember this list, the list of cards that I personally use in most Historic Brawl decks. This will be an ongoing series, so at the end of the video, if you liked or even gained anything from this video and want to see more, drop a sub. Thanks. All right, on today's episode, we're talking about red historic staples. There's not a lot. I couldn't figure out a lot. I mean, there's red spells that... I mean, red doesn't do anything really well. It does a lot of different stuff, but none of it really great besides burning. It has, like, low low amounts of removal. has bad card advantage. Um, it's getting better with card advantage as the years come on, but... Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to say for red when it comes to ramp. There's a little bit, not much. There's, um, wind conditions are very, there's not a lot of that kind of just stuff going on, the, the typical things, but we will go through everything. And let's start off with just the ramp, because there are a couple things that do ramp that I would, I would like to note. Um, this guy, Magda, Brazen, Outlaw, new guy, but whenever he, uh, attacks, well, when he becomes tapped or any other dwarf becomes tapped, you create a treasure token. Pretty much just a cheaper version of this guy oh oh this guy captain lannery when he attacks you get a tre treasure token so this is just like another one of him um that's how i look at him and if you have other dwarfs you can get some more advantage off it you can also sacrifice five treasures and search your library for a dragon put on a battlefield could be useful but more importantly we want to make treasure tokens with him and then we got her beergy god of storytelling both sides of her are good for card event uh card advantage from the harmful the horn of bounty or we can get just a um, good little mana ramp here whenever you play a, a when you cast a spell at a red. So every spell you play, you get a red mana. Helps you like cycle into more one drop spells, or you can you can really like go crazy with that if you get the right combinations of cards. So setting up storm or something like that. And then we got gold span dragon, just a powerful card. Comes in, turns sideways right away, and creates treasure tokens. Um. Also, makes your tre treasures add two mana instead of one, so good ramp there. Let's, next, we're going to go to the card advantage uh, side of things, because we already just in the beginning. And again, there's not much good card advantage. A lot of times you got to sacrifice, or you got to discard a card, or sack a creature, or you got to exile the card and, and be able to cast it from the exile, but you'll lose it at the end of the turn, stuff like that. But first and foremost, Faithless Looting, which was recently added, probably one of the best red card advantage spells must have in most decks furious rise because we don't have a lot of card advantage i wanted to put this card in here i probably wanted to put it in as a staple but in the right decks it is a staple card um beginning your upkeep beginning your end step if you control a creature power forward greater you get to exile a top card and until your next end step um when you exile another card you can play that card so it sits there for a while it, it, it's a really nice way to get some card advantage and it's constant Light up the stage. Not the best card on this list, but something to be noted. Um, if they've taken damage, it only costs one. You get to exile two cards until your next turn. The end of your next turn, you get to play those cards. So even if you can't play them that turn, you have all next turn to play them. Valakut, Awakening. Card's okay. Um, put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many plus one. The fact that plus one is super good. But beyond that, it also doubles as a land, so it's a really good card. Experimental Frenzy. This card is hard to navigate a little bit, but it's not that hard to deal with. You just destroy it when you're done with it. Get to, uh, look at the top card of your library anytime. You can play lands and cast spells from the top of your library, and you can play, you can't play lands or cast spells from your hand. So you're going to be filling up your hand, using the top of your library, and then when you're done with it, just destroy it, and you have all these cards in your hand that you've been sitting on. Then last but not least, in the card advantage, um, Chandra Fire Artisan. So she's super good. Again, if they attack her and she loses some counters off her, they, they have to you get to deal damage to target opponent or planes while her equal to the amount of counters removed. Um, but also at plus one exile top card of your library, you may play it this turn. Just every turn you can do that, which is really nice. It's recurrable card advantage. I'm always trying to look for things that are recurrable that you might always want to use when I'm when I'm building, and these are some cards I always look at. Next, we're gonna to go to burn spells. We have to go to burn spells. There's a couple that I feel like you have to play. Just because they're they're good enough. Overall, burn spells are lackluster, but you do have to run a few. Grim Lava Mancer. If you're running a burn deck or you just run anything where you want recurrable burn, Grim Lava Mancer is your guy. 
We've got Lightning Bolt. Gotta have it. One mana, three damage. There's a couple other spells you could do that with, but there's usually an additional cost. So we want to run Lightning Bolt. Um, probably the best burn spell. Um, play with Fire. Two damage to any target. The Kicker, if it's a player, you get to scry one. So it's a better shock, in my opinion. Bone Crusher Giant. Deals two damage to any target. Can't be prevented. Damage can't be prevented for the whole turn. So if you want to play him first, you can set up all, all your other burn spells if you're playing a burn deck. But on top of that, you get to play him as a creature. If they target him when he's out on the field as a creature, they take two damage. So really good card. Banefire, um, if it's it, it does X damage to any target, if you, call, if you put X as five or more, it can't be countered and it can't be prevented. So... Another card that's really, really good, especially later in the game. You can just finish the game off with it, clean up real quick. Perforous Inter Intervention. This card is super good as a removal spell, but also as a cleanup spell. Where you just get an XX Red Elemental with Trample Haze, swing out. They can't block enough damage and die. But beyond that, you can just kill a creature with it for very low cost. For two mana, you can kill a two, da two, two toughness. For three mana, you can kill a four toughness. So on and so forth. You keep adding up. Jaya's Immolating Inferno. Remember, we're playing Commander. You're going to have a Legendary in your deck. A lot of the time, you're going to get a lot more value out of this than you will um, um, any of your other X spells. So this is X damage to each of up to three targets. So you can target three things, and it will do X damage. X and two red is all you have to pay. As long as you have a Legendary out, you can play the spell. It's super good. And then Shatter, Shatter Skull Smashing. Doubles as a land that you can pay three life for to come into play on tap, as just like the other ones in the cycle. Beyond that, but you can do X damage divided as you choose among up to two target creatures or planeswalkers. If it's six or more, it deals twice X damage divided as you choose instead. So, really good card. Especially the later the game goes on, it gets better. Now we're going to talk about some um, sweeping cards, sweep spells. We got like Flame Sweep. Um... These are like our wrath effects, but more of just damage to everything effects. We don't have like hard damage, hard removal. These are all just like soft removal. Like they might be able to remove some things. So we got flame sweep, two damage to each creature except for creatures you control with flying. Again, you can build around this. It's a nice little sweep the board. Kills all the tokens. Maybe some of the early game. Turn three, it's really good. You're going to probably kill most things. Anger of the Gods. Again, turn three, you're going to kill almost everything with this. Three damage to each creature. If the creature is dealt damage this way. But die, exile instead. Great card, gotta have it. Anger of the Gods, I mean, way better than Flame Sweep, but it's, I mean, they're, they're both pretty good. And then we got Volcanic Fallout, can't be countered. So the fact that it can't be countered, really good. And it does two damage to each creature and each player. Again, a little, little, little different than Flame Sweep. Shatter Storm, destroy all artifacts, they can't be regenerated. I said, red can't hard, has, has no hard removal, but I lied. They do have hard removal in destroying artifacts. That's it. And this is it. Destroy all artifacts. Can't be regenerated. Super good. Gotta have it. Storm's Wrath. Four damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. Um, the fact that it's each Planeswalker too. But even the fact that it's just doing four damage to everything. Super good. Gotta have it. And a lot of decks. This is a staple card. And then Chandra's Awaken Inferno. Now this card can't be countered. Each opponent. For plus two, each opponent gets a. At the beginning of your upkeep, this emblem deals one damage to you emblem, which is just can build up the damage win condition right there. But on top of that, we have our sweeper because minus three, three damage to each non-elemental creature. You can build it around that or just hope there's no elementals. And then the last one, minus X deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker. If the permanent tell damage is the way to die, exile instead. So you have another just a removal spell in there. She does so much. You can put her in a bunch of categories. We put her here because that's what I'm going to use her for most. <laughs> Next, we have some other just removal spells that we have. Um, they didn't fit in the list because they weren't burned, so we're going to put them over here. We have Embereth Shieldbreaker. Now, he can destroy artifact as an adventure spell, and then you can play him for a 2-1 creature. Probably my favorite way to destroy artifact is with this card or Shatterstorm, so I, I usually always run him. Chaos Warp. A very rare kind of card in red. Something that you're probably always going to run because of it. Um, owner of target permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals cards from the top of their library until. Oh, then they reveal the top card of their library. If it's a permanent, they can put it onto the battlefield. So good, they could just miss. Sometimes they just get a land for their big guy. It's a really good card. Got to have it. Run this card. So good. Um, 
mostly because there's nothing else that does it. And then Stone Rain for two and a red, you can get rid of the pesky lands that are giving them really good effects or something else like that. If they're only they only have one red source, get rid of that red source. Only one black, you know, get rid of that one source they have. This this card can slow down the game a lot for an opponent, but also take something out that's really harming you. Now, last but not least, some of the notable honorable mentions. We're gonna we go to Robber of the Rich. Whenever Robber of the Rich attacks, a defending player has more cards in hand than you. Exile top card of their library. This could go in the card advantage. I mean, it is card advantage, but it's not your cards. We'll put them over there. Um, and then, as long as a rogue is attacked um, in the turn, you can cast cards exiled with him. I don't know if that counts for later after he dies, but I think it does. So, super good card advantage card. Fires of Invention. You can cast spells only during your turn, and you can cast no more than two spells each turn. But you don't have to pay for your spells. As long as you have lands that, that could pay for them. Like, the mana cost in lands. You can cast spells with mana value less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their mana costs. Easier way to say it than I did. I was fumbling all over it, but yeah. Now we got another ramp spell. I, I didn't really want to put it in here because it's kind of different. This is just a, a mana spell. Add seven mana for four, and then uh, you can cast only one more spell that turn. So it, it, it can't be used in a storm deck, but it's also really good to get your commander out really, really early. Um, if you're playing a commander that has more than like the average cost like five or six get her out right away seven get them out let's do it and then torbran he's like every red deck any deck that's mono red you want this guy so good makes red damage uh any anything doing damage that's red doing additional two damage so one ones do three five fives do seven really really good great card i had to put him on the list maybe not a staple in all decks but he's He's, he's a staple that I didn't want to miss out on this list. Now, last but not land, Lee, not, last but not lands is not correct. Last but not least, lands, because it is lands, not blue. Castle Embereth. Say this is a staple if you have a creature deck, creature base deck, Voltron deck. You're going to use this a lot. I'd probably run this in almost every deck. Um, Den of the Bugbear. If you don't know what man lands are by now, you haven't seen any of my other videos, you should go watch them because there's more of these videos. And I've already talked about man land. It's a man land. You want a man land. It's super good. This man land also says whenever uh, this creature attacks, get a 1-1 one -one goblin token top, tapped and attacking with it. So it gives you multiple um, creatures. Really good. Desert of the Fervent just has cycling. Forgotten Cave just has cycling. Worthy. Memorial to War. This is a land slot that can turn into a Stone Rain. Super good utility card. I don't know why mountains are on this list. And then Thriving Bluff for the same reasons all the other ones were. If you're playing multicolored, this just can help fix your mana really, really fast. Guys, if you like this video, go check out my other ones. This is like the fifth one already. Um, one more to go. I might start going into multicolored um, spells if this becomes popular, if people like it. But... After this video, I'm also going to be playing Historic Deck, so check that out. If you like the video or you, you can think of some cards I didn't put on this list, put them in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button because there's going to be more videos. I mean, eventually there will be more. So thanks for watching. Check you next time. Peace.